Hey everybody, just came back from the grocery store to pick up the ingredients for my Maltese dish that I'll be cooking, which is rosso corn, um, also known as baked rice. That was one of my grandmother's favorite dishes um, in the 20 years that she grew up in Malta. A little geography on Malta, it is six miles wide and seven miles long, located in the Mediterranean Sea. It is about 50 miles from the southern tip of Sicily and 185 miles from northern Africa. Okay, now go over the ingredients that I just got at the grocery store. Here's onions, which we will dice to throw in the top layer that goes on top of the rice before you bake it. Here are eggs, you only need four of them, so I bought a carton of six. We also stopped by the local butcher and bought four thick cut pieces of bacon to give the fish a little more flavor. We also uh, bought rice, which is the main ingredient in the dish, one of the main ingredients in the dish. We went with minute rice because it was a little faster to make than other types of rice, but you could use brown rice, whichever type of rice you prefer. And another main ingredient is the ground pork, which will go on top of the rice also. It is probably the main ingredient other than the rice. And then we also bought tomato paste and diced tomatoes, which make kind of like a spaghetti sauce, I guess you could say. Red spaghetti sauce that goes on top of the rice before you bake it. And also some curry to add a little bit of flavor, a little bit of Maltese flavor to the dish. I also had a couple items at home that I didn't have to buy at the store. Obviously salt and pepper, which everybody has and grated Parmesan cheese. You can use whatever type of cheese you prefer also. It doesn't matter, but her family, my grandma's family, always use Parmesan cheese, so that's what we're gonna use. And the last but not least ingredient is water, which I also have Hello everybody, I am Chef Jake Switch, and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're taking a trip to Malta, and I brought along with me my Maltese grandmother, who's gonna help me prepare my dish and tell you guys a little bit about Maltese cuisine. Right here I have a Maltese cookbook, straight from Malta, where the recipe comes from. And I look forward to taking you guys through this. The Maltese dish that we're making is called Ross Filforn, also known as baked rice. And each Maltese family has their own kind of different uh, version of this dish. And today we're making the version that my grandmother grew up with as she was a child. I'm going to start off by finely dicing this onion. I didn't know your son came into the window like that. Has that window always been there? Oh, I'm on the thing. I don't know. As you can tell, I'm not the best dicer, but we'll make it work. Quick change in knives. Now I'm dicing like a champ. Next up in the dish, I have to beat four eggs.
Now that all my preparation is done, the onions are chopped, the ground pork is out of the fridge, I'm going to start doing a little bit of cooking. I'm going to start off by adding the onions and a mixture of this lean ground pork into my skillet over here. I'm cook it for about five minutes. Each family has their own meat they use. Some families use lamb, some families use rabbit, but we use uh, pork and bacon, which will be added later. Nice and hot. Make sure this is nice and hot. Go ahead and add this. Little onions. And a pound of ground pork. Now that the onions have been nicely sweated, I'm going to add this pound of ground pork. Alright, mix it around a little bit. Kind of get it all mixed up with the onions. Get that flavor really nice and going. I wish you guys, wish you guys were here to smell this. It smells really good. Now as I go ahead and wait for this meat to brown, I'm going to grab bacon so I can start to dice it and add it to the mixture as well. Got some nice thick cut bacon. Three pieces. Nice and thick pieces. Just gonna go ahead and dice them up. And just like that. As the sausage, or pork, and uh, onions start to brown, I'm going to add this bacon. Mix it in and start to let the bacon brown. And as I do this, my grandmother right here is going to tell you a little bit more about Maltese. Maltese uh, dishes were usually influenced by different nations who have occupied Malta since the beginning of time. With the Arabs that are really across the Mediterranean from where Malta is, the Italians who are practically next door neighbors to Malta, uh, the French when Napoleon inv invaded Malta, and the English who owned the island until 1964. So as this continues to brown, I'm gonna go ahead and add a small can of tomato paste and a regular can of diced tomatoes with tomato juice inside. Spoon to get this out. start to mix this up so come on take a look at it and let's start to get it all going together Turn it up a little bit so as this starts to really get put together this is what it starts to look like looks really good now I'm going to go on to the next couple steps, add a cup of water, 
a half a tablespoon of curry powder, which shows the uh, Arab influence in the Maltese cuisine. Not too much curry powder though. Don't want to over overtake the natural flavoring of the dish. Got a little bit, maybe a little bit more. Tiny bit, there we go. And last but not least, the salt and pepper. There's a certain amount of salt and pepper, just kind of cover it pretty evenly, like that. Just pepper. I'm gonna give it a mix. If you guys are here, you'd be able to smell all the different flavors and the Maltese way of cooking. So now that we have the ground pork, the onions, the bacon, um, the tomato paste, and the tomatoes all added to this mixture right here, we're gonna let it simmer for about an hour and 15 minutes. And then we're also gonna get start to get the rice going, which doesn't take as long, but still takes a couple minutes. Okay, now that about 40 minutes has gone by and the rice has began to boil, we're gonna go ahead and set the timer for 20 minutes and let the rice simmer. Gonna add this lid to it. And if you wanna take a look at the almost finished product of the pork and tomato sauce mixture, it's starting to look pretty good. It's starting to get a little bit more firm. The water's starting to cook down. And, it start, and it's almost time to start to combine the rice and the mixture to go in the oven to bake. It's been about 20 minutes. The rice should be done. Yep, it's done, if you can't tell. And this is starting to look better too. Almost done, it's got about 15, 20 more minutes on that one as well. And we're gonna, like I said, combine them both together and start to bake the rice with that over the top of it. All right, now I'm gonna open up my recipe book and continue on with the dish. Now that the rice is all boiled and ready to go and the other mixture is ready to go too, we're gonna dump the rice into the hamburger or the pork bacon tomato concoction. Get all that rice out. Alright. Now we're gonna mix this really well all together. So it has a nice consistent base. It smells really good. Can't wait to get this in the oven. together for the most part gonna bring over our four scrambled beaten eggs and we're gonna add to the top of the rice and then again we're gonna mix it all again together Looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and bring over our nine by 13 baking dish. And we're, we're going to add some pan so that the rice, baked rice doesn't stick. There you go, nice and oiled up. Now I'm gonna look for a towel. We're gonna get one last mixture, mix up, get it all spread out nice and evenly across the, 
across the pan and get it ready to go in the oven. All right, now that it's in the dish, here's how it looks. And we're gonna put some cheese on top of it too for the last little touch before we put it in the oven. We're gonna go with Parmesan cheese. That's the cheese my grandma always used. You can use cheddar, whatever kind of cheese you want. Get a nice thick layer on top. It helps make the top nice and crispy, which is key to this dish. All right, got a nice layer of Parmesan on there now. Got the oven almost heated to 350. Now we're gonna throw this on in there. Oh yeah, it's nice and hot. There's one last look at it before it goes in. It's gonna stay in there for about an hour and 15 minutes. And we set the timer. And boom, we are ready. See you guys back in about an hour and 15 minutes. All right, there's the buzzer. Let's check it out. There we go. Nice and brown on top, that's how we wanted it. Cheese all melted, firm on top. Perfect. Now it's almost ready to serve. Gotta let it cool for about five, 10 minutes, and then it'll be good to serve. Now that the dish is all done, and ready to eat, me and my grandma are gonna sit down and we're gonna enjoy what we created. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Yummy. Yeah. Oh, wow, this smells good. Looks mm -hmm. really good. Wait for it to cool down for a second. Got some veggies to go along with the meal to make it full course. Call them. Where are they? And we're also accompanied by the Maltese cookbook once again. And the Brussels sprouts. Yeah, and the Brussels sprouts. I want to try it, but you gotta try it first. You can tell me if oh, it's me? like if it's like you used to have. Careful, it might be a little hot. Sorry. Hot? No, wait. It fell out of my mouth. Good. Mm. But you know, only good. It's even better than what I used really? to cook. You heard her. Yummy. You know, Jake, I've eaten this since I was a child, but guess how we didn't put it in our own oven. We had a community oven. When you go down the street and you take it to the to people that only did that, and you told them, I have baked rice, and he tell you, come back in an hour, and you go back and you pick it up, and it's already cooked, and wow. you take it home. That's, that's a cool concept. Nice. And this way keeps your house cool in the summer. Yeah. It is really good. I'm gonna try making this more often. All right, and that concludes our trip to Malta. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed this and food. one more thing. One more thing. One more thing is I forgot to mention when the influence, the food influence, and I forgot to mention the Greeks and the Turks also had a big influence in the way we ate, the food was cooked. Maltese cuisine, right? The Maltese cuisine. Cool. All right. In closing, I'm really happy to have learned so much about the Maltese cuisine, and also I cherished the time cooking and talking in the kitchen with my grandma while we were making this this dish, and I learned a lot about the flavors of Malta. Now I'm convinced that I need to go to Malta and get to experience first those flavors firsthand and the traditions firsthand.